This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Thank you very much, uh, Madam or uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, and all those involved. Madam Clerk is who I was looking at. Uh, it's been a long week. Um, <clears throat> Thank you to, to our commissioners. It's good to have you back before the committee again. Um, Ms. Ms. Maynard, to, to uh, follow uh, the line of questioning that my colleague, Mr. Gord, asked. You know, when I saw this letter, you know, the clerk of the Privy Council and Secretary to Cabinet uh, responds to a access to information request um, with language that uh, accuses that requester, and in this case a media outlet, um, of of uh, um, being vexatious. That's a pretty serious accusation. Um, if you could um, just expand a little bit about the process that you go through when a government department comes to you and says, uh, we don't want to fulfill this request because we think in this case a media outlet, um, and feel free to answer more generally, is making a vexatious access to information request. Can you expand on that? So I'm happy you made that uh, distinction because the act does make a distinction. The, it's the request itself that has to be abusive, malicious, vexatious, unreasonable, not the requester. Uh, so we are spending a lot of time reviewing the wording of the request, making sure that, that what's being asked uh, meets the intent you know, of the Access to Information Act. It's, it's not abusive or it's not vexatious in a sense, but it's the request itself. Um, the process is the request, the application for uh, the authorization to not act to, on a request is made by the department. We review it sometimes just reviewing the, 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 um, the, the argument of the institutions, we can say no right away. Uh, it's a, it is an exceptional uh, mechanism because we are taking away somebody's right of access. Uh, we make sure that these representations from the institutions are shared with the requesters so they have a chance to respond. And based on the response and the argument from the institutions and the wording of the request, we issue a decision to allow or not allow uh, the institution not to act on the request. Okay, th thank you for for that because it seems like, and, and this uh, uh, is closely Closely connected to the uh, to the funding question, because here you have you know basically the prime minister's department that uh, so so the leader of the government is uh, is is would put you in a pretty uncomfortable position, especially when you've explained to this committee that uh, you need more resources to be able to sh to ensure that Canadians can have access to. Uh, to to their governments, you know, it's not the government itself as an entity, but it's it's uh, you know it's it's the government of the Canadian people to have a, have access to that. Now, uh, I uh, I would certainly not question your integrity and independence, but certainly it puts you in a very a challenging spot as an officer of Parliament and a, as an institution when you have you know the highest ranking public servant that is going to be involved in in you know the passing of the budget. Now all of a sudden there's there's this conflict there, and I know you've expanded on that a little bit. Uh, so, so can you explain as to um, how how you make sure that that doesn't happen? Because you know, again, that's concerning that there would be this this what could certainly be perceived as as uh, uh, an institutional challenge. I'm sure. I can assure you, like I said earlier, I am definitely feeling the independence in my role. I am acting, uh, and I, I use all my authorities that I have under the Act. Uh, the challenge is, it, it's like you say, it's the optics, what it looks like. Uh, but I am not uh, at all uh, challenged in my, in my authority uh, with respect to who's making that decision or who's asking for the, the application. I just, the, the lack of resources makes it that the people are waiting longer for an answer, which is, an, it's unfortunate. We currently have 3,500 complaints that are not being investigated because we don't have enough investigators. We have uh, requests like this that we, uh, we have to put legal services on and it takes away from other type of cases. So we need more resources to be able to respond in a more effectively fashion. I appreciate that because you're a relatively small office, an independent office, against the entire infrastructure of government. There's a little bit of a dis, uh, an imbalance that exists there. Um, 
Uh, I'm sure, Ms. Ms. Maynard, you probably listened to the testimony that the minister provided to this committee saying that, you know, yeah, there are a few challenges, but we're making great strides. Um, when that's, there seemed to be a massive disconnect between what the minister said and certainly the experience of those uh, uh, that we have heard, you, both your testimony, but also many who have tried to uh, use the access to information system in this country. Does that concern you that there seems to be this disconnect between those who are making the decisions and the lived experience of so many Canadians on gonna, the ground. going to need a very quick response, uh, Ms. Mayor. It is concerning that uh, there's no action uh, plan being done or actual actions taken this year. It looks like we're going to be having to wait for the next round of review of legislation in five years, which I'm not going to be here for. 